Chevrolet Camaro built for the racetrack, is that something you'd pay $75,000 for? That's what we're going to talk about today on After Drive. This week up at Monticello Motor Club, we got to drive the new Camaro Z28, and the guys and I on this panel here are gonna be talking about that car today and whether it's worth it for you guys to buy a $75,000 Camaro. It sounds a little bit insane, uh, but let's introduce those particular knuckleheads. Jason Harper, uh, Automobile Magazine and Bloomberg News, and uh, Travis Akulski over there from Jalopnik. Hey. Deputy editor of Jalopnik.com. So anyway. Camaro Z28, $75,000, it's built for the track, and we drove it, so what do you think of it? Well, we all three had a turn yesterday, which yeah. was pretty cool, as a yeah. matter of fact, so it's nice and fresh in our minds. Mm -hmm. um, is it worth 75 grand? Well, that's the big question, because um, there are two cars we're gonna talk about today that it could be compared with. One of them's more expensive, and one of them is less expensive, and uh, we'll have to see whether it's got the uh, enough track because it's a track car. Right. It is a track car. I mean, yeah. let's let's talk about the initial impressions. Let's say, what was your like first two hundred yards like when you pulled right, out Dick. yesterday? So <laughs> the reason the reason why Harper's asking me that is that um, uh, because of there's a lot of grip from the flow tie, <laughs> and the front end grip is so so particularly acute that I. Um, I took it on a, a bit of a controlled pirouette, I think we call that. <laughs> Mr. Spinelli, done spun yeah, yesterday right? within the first name. 200 yards. Because it wouldn't be morning without donuts. <laughs> that's true. Right. It was <laughs> early in the morning. Um, well, well, but well it's let's also, talk about that. I mean, it's got those this, tires, right? Because those tires, it's probably yes. Trofeo ours. Because this is a They're good time. They're super sticky, but yes. they've got to be warm to get the grip. And this is a good time to tires, talk about tires. In other words. First or second. Sorry, did I just cut you yeah, off you while you were talking about tires? Yeah, you just keep interrupting me, and I'm trying to talk about the tires. So you step on the gas, you spin the rears, you loop it around, you look like a moron if you do that immediately. Yellow frankly. flags come out. Yeah. Yellow flags. <laughs> Everyone's driving by laughing at it you. It won't start. Yeah, all right. No, but but... Let's, Actually, let's yes. talk about so, exactly. One well, of the main components to this car are indeed those Pirellis, yes. which are street legal by a scintilla. I yeah. mean, I think if you'd add just a little bit more rubber, there's no way that it would be street legal. And so, like a real race car, and you have to treat this car like a real race car, mm -hmm. you have to pay to the temp attention to the temps. Absolutely. Sure. And because, the, it, I mean, the, the coefficient of friction is almost nothing under, you know, I don't know what the temperature is, but, you know, we just sort of pulled out of the pits, and in Monticello, you leave the pits into a corner. Into a seat corner, which I seem to negotiate just fine right before you. Well, because here's, no, but I was, I was chasing he was driving, down. You were driving was, slower than him. Yeah, yeah, yeah I was clear. Yeah, Mike's going for No, it. what happened was you were behind, we were both behind, well, actually, you went out first, and we were both behind a lead car. Now, my lead car guy takes off, and he's gone, because he's got a car That's with warm problem. tires. Yeah. And so I'm leader. going to yeah. catch up, and I got a little too aggressive on the throttle, which because there's a ton of torque in the LS7. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing. So let's talk about what are the things about the Z28 that make it a Z28. So definitely LS7. We'll list them out. LS7 Time. from the Z06. From the, the Z06. Previous Z06. The previous Z06. Um, gigantic oh. brakes. Garbage which, ceramic car brakes. Garbage ceramic the brakes. the best part of that car. Yes. By far. By far. Um, also some aero bits, but that's not uh, the most important thing. The weight savings. The most important thing are the tires. <laughs> well, the part, yeah, the tires. And the weight savings. No, well, well, the, the weight savings, let's be honest. Let's, when, say, when you, let's put air quotes around the weight savings. I mean, I mean if we were going to prioritize a, this, well... Tires and brakes. Yeah. Tires and brakes, and I thought... And, and the, the damage. And, and the chassis. It's, 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 it's the chassis You know, all changed. the parts of the car are the most important parts of the car, <laughs> is what we've established and, and, here. And as by, proved by our buddy Spinelli, yeah, exactly. uh, well, also the, the driver and his ministrations. Well, well, all I did, I mean, I spun it, and then once the tires were up to temp, you know, somebody else spun somebody it. Somebody else we don't had, have to... had, a, had a moment, we won't name him, yeah. but it was like one of these... <laughs> and he was waiting for the crash. And yeah, it, and it never, it never it came. It didn't happen. And anyway. his tires were warmed up already, so... Who's this? Uh, no, we're not naming him, we're not naming him. He's not here, no, no it wasn't you. you. Where's it you? Did I had, oh, I had a moment. Oh, did, did you? you? Yeah, I slid it pretty good through the S's at one point, but I didn't Tank spin slapper. or anything. Was it, were you still pointed to the direction you meant to oh, go? yeah, I just got real sideways. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah. yeah, that's part of it. It was fun. Yeah. It was a good time. Well, okay, so the other thing is the PTM, right? Yeah. So you get uh, a, a pretty wide latitude of uh, track, uh, traction stability control. Yeah. Right, exactly. Um, 
and and actually they've they've matched it up with steering feel a little bit. So if you by the time you get up to five, which is the gives you the most the race, latitude, the, the race, race yeah. Yeah. right race. away from turning everything off. Yeah, it's basically yeah, the, a moment away from turning everything off. Um, the steering feel it's very it's heavy. It's almost race car heavy. Um, I think the steering was the least impressive part of the car. Oh, the steering didn't bother. It, it wasn't the, terrible. The Camaro was always steering sound. It was better concerned. than a regular Camaro, but I think but that's, that. This Camaro, with all the parts that were changed, it didn't feel like a Camaro to me, which is probably the best compliment I can pay to the car, because I don't like the Camaro. I, I hate to say, I'm 100% with you. I think the Camaro heavy. is... The problem with the Camaro is it, it's one of those cars they decided the, the form was much more important than the function. Right. You know, you drive the SS, and you, you don't have a real sense what the tires are ever really doing. Mm -hmm. It's hazy, you, you can't see your corners. You never know where your corner placement quite is. I always yeah. feel like it's driving a, a, a car with like oven mitts on. I, There's no I also sense feel like I'm looking out of a tank with the shades shut. Cause, but in the Z28, for some reason, I feel like I could see. Uh, and, no, and I that's weird because they didn't change. They any didn't change of that. anything, but they didn't I didn't make the windows I felt bigger. Much more connected than I do in a one LE or a Z. You sit lower. You did the, sit, the whole car is lower. The, lower. The, the center of gravity in the car is lower, and, and that's actually better. one of the things that really matters. I mean, All right, so it's a, it's a car that was never designed from the outset to do what to it do did, with it. to do this, and somehow the engineers took that car and made it into something that I think is spectacularly good. The engineers yeah. went for it. Like they, they said, we can do this. It, let's do it, and yeah. it's obviously let's let's watch the, the Corvette. Watch the language there. The Corvette is a better car in every way, shape, or form. I mean, if, if I was going to spend seventy-five grand, the Stingray would be my, you know, would be my. But if you want an LS7, you got to get the Camaro. Now. Well, that's the thing. And if you there's, want a, there's a, a thing with the a Camaro. If you want a natural, but it's the last really good naturally aspirated V8 that that you can get in those cars, exactly. right? Because the rest of them are supercharged now. So, but yeah, I came away. At first, I thought the car felt really kind of blunt. I was trying to finesse the car, yeah. and the car does not like finesse. I was it's trying to too. feather off the brakes, and, and it no. just, and I was like, well, I felt really uncomfortable, particularly after your, your moment. But I mean, I, I felt, <laughs> I did have a feeling like, I don't really feel like I know where the limits are. I came back in and talked to the engineers who yeah. had helped tune the car, and he, one of the guys said, look, the brakes are so good, stab the brakes just mm -hmm. right before like the one cone, yeah. you know, and then pop off the brakes. Don't try to feather off. Turn the car and the car will turn. Yeah. Which doesn't really make a lot of sense unless you deal with it like a race car. Right. And that race cars work that way. And, and actually, the car turns. It's true. And yeah. it's because of that huge amount of mechanical grip. I mean, those tires are insane. You get them up to temperature. And they're, yeah, you're right. I mean, they're just below slicks, right? And so between that... Well, the front tire is how wide? It's, it's the widest front the tire. It's the square profile, right? Three yeah, square all profile. 305s yeah, in the crazy. front could be the largest uh, uh, production, front, production front. front tires you can get, right? And they're about 600 bucks each. That's not bad. Yeah, so we'll talk about the value in a little bit, but um, that's a big thing. Which brings me to the fact that this is not a car. I mean, the fact is, this is a track day car. It is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could drive up if it's dry. If, not, if it's raining outside, I don't want to drive up. Nope, not with uh, those Today, tires. as a matter of fact, they were supposed to have another track day. There's people there. Best of luck. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. raining right now, and I do not want to be that guy. No. You know, I don't, I'm sure they've, they've corralled them. They've, you know, you can drive 30 miles Oh, that guy's there. And, yeah. There's going to be that guy. There, there's somebody's going to end up damaging a guardrail in Monticello today. If, is, they, if they if actually they do it. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. But, you know, if I ever, if you tried to do a U-turn in this car, you need an entire parking lot. <laughs> you know, it's... Yeah. So if you're the guy who wants a fast car, you know, you want the Camaro, you love it, you don't buy this car. You right. buy the, the, the ZL1. Well, right? so let's look at the pros in terms of value, right? So what are you getting? You're getting carbon ceramic brakes standard for insane. 75 grand. That's pretty insane. insane. Yeah. Like, there's no other car you can get ceramic brakes standard for that little money. When when the the when the Corvette came out the, the uh, with the carbon ceramics, it started what a hundred thousand, right? And that yeah, was, was, zero uh, was one. the zero one was the first a real one. was was like wow, we can't believe we can get a car for a hundred thousand dollars with carbon ceramics. Right, right. right. This yeah. is 75. Yeah. And these brakes are phenomenal. And, and you need the, them. Some of the best brakes I think I've ever. Use I would say honestly, right, right the up to a real race car. Yeah. I mean, I keep going. I kept going out. I took. We went out for a couple laps too, and I yeah. kept going deeper and deeper into every corner. And it didn't. Well, I didn't miss. I didn't miss you. I mean, because there's because it, basically they have it set up with three cones for braking, right? So you, you break at the first cone, you're done before the corner, right? So you're yeah. you got to get back on the gas. You yeah. do on the second. You, you the second cone, the same thing, right? You have to get back on the gas. You could go second cone, half of the second cone, and almost at the first cone. That's how, and for a heavy car like that, it really 
it doesn't feel as heavy miraculous. as it is, though, either. It doesn't feel like it's it a 30, plenty it's heavy. It's a 30 pound car, but it doesn't feel, I don't think it felt 30 pounds. It, it, it feels felt lighter heavy. than that. Okay, so what, other, what else do you get in terms of value, right? So you get the flow tie. Yeah. Ooh, yeah that you get the, the, you know, the, the bow yep. tie that's open so you can get cooling air through it. The trick you get the arrow, and apparently it's got 150 pounds of, of downforce. Unfortunately, Monticello has one of the longest back straights in the right. country. We, we did not get to use that yesterday, no. so which was unfortunate. Because yeah, I think that would have been really telling of Sora's downforce, which we right. didn't get to experience. But they also, when I was running the car, they had to open the front straight for me for a oh, little bit. Nice. Oh, but, uh, then they close it down because they didn't want anybody crashing the car off yeah. into the woods. Right, right. But well, that's the thing, right? Because the downforce is kind of negligible unless you're doing. Re if you're at Monza, if you're doing a really, really high speed long corner, right? Then yeah, maybe you feel it compared to like the ZL1. If you're up at Ner at uh, Lutz Ring where they test it, mm -hmm. right? It's quicker than any other Camaro. It's quicker than the ZL1. It's quicker than all the Mustangs, and you know they benchmarked it. And it's that's because mechanical grip and brakes. And that engine is fantastic too. Yeah, so you're boy, getting the pulls. engine. Yeah. So it that's pulls. the other thing you get is that it's engine. Great. I mean the, the torque. I mean yeah, on the horse part, but the torque when you come out a corner, you know it's mm -hmm. got the diff working. I mean you yeah. feel that diff working, and you just hammer it. As soon as you get the wheel pretty much straight, you don't want what you don't want to do is, yeah, you, you go here <laughs> and get the wheel is not going to be your. I turn with my pinky. I actually do. This is you, do you know, this? I put, like I'm drinking tea. I put. Uh, yeah. Don't you drink tea while you're driving? Yeah, I do. Okay. Any, well, anywho. Uh, <laughs> what just uh, happened? I'm not right. entirely certain. <laughs> but yes, so... Um, also so, get that super trick suspension. Okay, so then, all right, so that's the other thing. You get the DV, DSSVs, right? Which you spoke to the engineers yes. about a lot more in depth than I did. So exactly. Did um, uh, Mark Stilo, and let's go to that. A lot of times at General Motors, we have what we call ATW projects, advanced technical workshops. So we'll develop it, they'll see a new technology, and we'll want to we'll want to try to develop that. So a niche product like a Z28 gives a perfect opportunity for a, a low volume, specialized car, kind of a boutique car. We can go out and use something that was originally developed for racing. So working with Multimatic on something like the Z28 was great because this is going to be a track focused car. We worked with a lot of guys that were in Multimatic racing division. So as we're having problems, they really would work very quickly with us and do quick turns on tuning the, the damper and things like that. So, you know, so working with those guys, it was great. Like they were there with us at the Nürburgring. We could literally take a piece of paper and sketch the force velocity curve we wanted to the shock absorber. They could go back to their van, they could laser cut the orifice in the, in the spool valve and build the shocks up. We could take them out on the track and, and run them like within an hour. And the quick turnaround time and the, the ability to tune exactly what we wanted were part of the reasons we chose the Multimatic damper. The way they work is this port, this orifice, is computer generated off of the force velocity curve you want. Then it has a piston that slides inside of it. As the piston moves up and down for different velocities, it's going to open up that, that area more or less and change your force curve. And the other nice thing is the fact that the, the two sides are truly decoupled from each other where you have, you can tune compression and rebound separately. That car. Basically, the reason you can stab the brake and get back off it is, unlike a normal road car, there isn't a bunch of weight transfer. It's you do flat. that normal car, and the car rears back. That mm -hmm. car just sits flat. It, mm -hmm. it really yeah. does have a racing suspension. Right. And that is one of the big things. That and the tire and the brakes, really what makes it. You can drive it like a race car. Yep. Um, I don't want it on the street, but if you want a track day car and you want to go American, it's the one to get, I think. It's well, you said, what's the cheaper car? Okay, you're so about? so here, so there there are two cars. What the of course the more expensive one is the Porsche 911 GT3, which you may argue that the 911 GT3 is the more agile car. It's lighter. Um, it's, a, it's a Porsche, right? Yeah. It's got that engine. Um, you can throw the GTR in there too. You GTR could throw track the, pack. I, I would throw. I would. Yeah, but it's too expensive. All right, I guess so. Because the 911 GT3 isn't too expensive? No, it's but what I'm saying expensive. is, yeah, I mean, if you compare it directly to the GT3, right? Because, yeah. or maybe the GT3 RS, because you would probably not want to drive the RS on the road all the time. Right. So maybe on the other end, unlike the GTR, which you can drive on the road and, and it's all adaptive look, and all that stuff. Camaro's 75 grand. By the time you get a GT3 or a GT3 RS, 160 grand right. out the door. So in other words, you look at that, it's a real good value. It, yeah. yeah, it's a deal. It's a, it's a deal. But Ferrari 458 Speciale, top track car okay. as far as expensive, right? right? Sure. GT3. Hey, did you drive one of those? No, no. No? Okay. Um, <laughs> and uh, 
This and then what, the Boss? Yes, Boss 302. That's the cheaper one. So that's really where the Chevy versus Ford thing is coming in. So And they don't make it anymore, correct? They don't, right. And yeah, the Laguna Seca was something like uh, 54 grand, a little bit more than that, probably 60 out the door. Um, but less now, mm -hmm. if you can get one. So that's the thing. But it was, was the also boss. less power, also less brakes. Didn't have the carbon ceramics on it. It was also less also. weight. Right, right. Here's what's fun, and this is a great idea. I love the fact that, you know, you may not be a racer, you know, you may not go fender to fender, but mm -hmm. the idea that it, it's great fun to be on the track and that that even the American makers now are realizing that you want to track, you know, you leave in the garage, you can drive up to the track, drive for half a day and then drive back home. It means you don't have to you don't have to put it on a trailer. Mm -hmm. it, it, you know, you you can have one car that's one car, separate car that serves these purposes. It's really exciting. I love the fact that GM well, did this. I yeah. mean, even the fact, you can argue with 75 grand is too much or not, but yeah. the fact that they love it and people will buy it yeah. is really cool. Well, you know what's cool is getting to talk to the engineers and hearing how enthusiastic they are about something like this. They love it. They love this stuff. I mean, it, that's what you, I mean, more car companies need to put the engineers on projects like this just to kind of make them work through it. Because there are, you know, the, the, Corvette, the, the Camaro may not be the best platform for a track car. But they figured it out, because mm -hmm. engineers will always figure it out, right? I mean, they, they came up with those really key things yeah. that made this a great track car. So um, let's bring up the Corvette, though. When okay. the Z06 comes out, I mean, it'll be a better road car, obviously. Mm -hmm. Will it whoop ass? It'll be better on the track, I would think. It'll be a little more expensive. But I Quite think that the Z28, there's something, there's like a certain aura around the Z28, right? There's certain people that are going to be like, I want the muscle car. I want the car that was like the Trans Am car. I want the big, brash American heritage. I don't need a car that's got 625 horsepower that can go on the track and then now it's a convertible. And so this is the hardcore car now in the lineup. The Z06 used to be the hardcore Corvette, hardcore you know, Chevy. Yeah. The Z28 is now that car, I think. I went in expecting not to like the car, I'll be honest. I, 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 really? I talked to colleagues. I was like, I'm sure it'll be because I don't like the Camaro. Yeah. I walked out yesterday with a big old. I, once I figured out how to drive it the way it needed, wanted to be driven, mm -hmm. I had a blast. And I when know. you get the temperatures up to like 30, 35, 36, on the because you see on the gauge, yeah. you get a little slide in there. Mm -hmm. You know, it gets yeah. a little greasy. Well, and right, it was fun. That yeah, it was fun. But you're right about the tires. If you overdrive the tires, which is kind of easy to do in that car, if you if you don't, I mean, if, if you're hammering it constantly, that's the it, that'll happen before the brakes fade. In other words, the, never the, never thing, the thing that you're going to have to worry about is greasy tire. Like once you but get, but then it gets past, more fun. It gets more fun. And yeah. I will say, you you could correct. I, I was worried about the breakaway coming really suddenly and things going, you know, badly. super progressive. But like, no, yeah, <laughs> I could, you, felt, you felt it. You what felt it in your ass, which yeah. was was a good sign. And you probably just do a little correction and then you're and back. Then back and, and it was fun. That was fun. You could sneak around the curves. Right. So negatives, steering a little bit. Steering was a little numb, especially and, on center at lower speeds. I thought that it was. Uh, yeah, tire placement. You still can't see up out the car it's hard to figure out wh where you're on the curbing no matter what I just kind of play I just kind of put it where I thought it was gonna well, go and it worked every time so I had yeah. no comp I had less complaints about that but it was the steering and that was the main complaint that I had basically steering and the fact that it's a Camaro is that gonna be a, an issue? it's hard to see out of it's hard to see out it's hard it's heavy but it's not as hard as I remember it being to see out of and right. I didn't feel like I was in the big battle axe that I was in it felt like a small battle car axe. So I, like I, you know, I was very, very impressed with it. So ultimately value, because that's what everybody's arguing about online. Is it worth 75 grand? I think so. I think so as well. Yeah. Uh, I think it is for what you get. And, and for how it performs, it's, it's almost a great value. But for what you get, for what you get ceramic brakes, you can hammer on it all day. Mm -hmm. It's you a niche player. Tires. It's a very is it, niche is it worth bringing out on the road for 75 grand? No. No. But if you, if you have access to a track and you, you were yeah. a track whore like some of us are yeah it's fantastic and it's yeah that's it i guess track that's incorporated track whores incorporated <laughs> cool the knuckleheads uh that's it for after drive what do you guys think is the camaro z28 worth 75 bucks times a <laughs> thousand <laughs> 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 that's it uh travis sikulski jalopnik and uh, Jason Harper from everywhere else. <laughs> so we we'll see you guys next week. Next week. <laughs> what am I saying? We'll see you guys next, next time. week. Next time on After Drive.